Welcome all to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about motherboard, especially about overclocking supported motherboards. You all know what motherboards are, but I hope you might be interested to know about specialties and differences when it comes to a gaming motherboard compared to a normal motherboards available in the market. This video comes in two parts. As the first part, today I'm going to discuss about aesthetics, power delivery, overclocking and water cooling facilities comes with the gaming motherboard. Especially when you compare these motherboards with normal motherboards available in the market. But before jumping into that area, if you haven't already subscribed, please uh, support my channel by subscribing it. As well as at the end of the video, uh, if you really enjoyed and if you learned something out of this video, please give me a thumbs up and help this video. Okay, as the first topic, we are discussing about the aesthetic benefits comes with the gaming motherboard. Mostly gaming motherboards offers more aesthetics than a normal motherboard. Sometimes they comes with special color themes or maybe themed to a, some game or maybe with some addressable RGB lights or sometimes some other motherboards comes with OLED displays as well. But if you take this motherboard, this is Asus ROG Maximus 12 Hero motherboard. This one actually comes with RGB lighting areas. If you can see here, it, it has some uh, Hero logo illuminated with RGB lights as well as the ROG logo illuminated with RGB lights. Uh, mostly, if you take a gaming motherboard, it has better look than compared to a normal motherboard. But it is not mandatory. Sometimes you might be able to see some high performance motherboard without any special aesthetics. Okay, now let's discuss about the power delivery section. So if you can see uh, in the top part of the motherboard, uh, this bigger area uh, covered with these bigger heat sinks, uh, especially the power delivery section. So this power delivery area in the motherboard actually providing uh, power to your processor. If you take a um, gaming motherboard compared to a normal motherboard, so these power delivery systems are much much improved especially they are capable of providing more power to your processor without generating too much of heat because when you're delivering more power it generates more heat and on the other side if your power system generates more heat so it will reduce the performance in order to overcome that issue most of these gaming motherboards comes with a power delivery system which is more efficient but it is capable of providing uh, more power to your processor area uh, when it comes to this power delivery area it has multiple components, right? So if you take this uh, heatsink out of this motherboard, you will be able to see some of these components sitting around your motherboard. So these each and every component section, we call it as a power delivery stage. This each and every power delivery stage is responsible to provide power to your processor. So if you take this one power delivery section, usually we use the term called VRM, to identify this one power delivery section. So when, whenever you are hearing the term VRM, it is not actually a one single component. It is a set of components that helps powering up your processor. So this VRM means voltage regulator modules. So if you take this one VRM section, it usually has few components in it. At first it has a MOSFET. MOSFET is the component which is actually reducing the voltage comes to your processor. So you can see uh, in the top of this processor area, you can see uh, the processor power supply uh, cables. So it connects in here. But this processor power supply provides 12 volt of voltage. To operate your processor, it requires only 1.1 to like 1.4, 1.5 voltage. Depending upon the running frequency as well as the processor behaviors, this voltage can be varies from uh, 1.1 to like 1.5. This MOSFET uh, by help of a driver, it inputs this 12 voltage and output the voltage that processor is requesting to provide. So more you overclock, the processor will ask more voltage from this MOSFET drivers. Right? Then the MOSFET will provide that requested voltage by the processor. After the MOSFET, then it reach to the coil or we call it as chalks. The bigger pieces you can see around this uh, 
motherboard are actually the chalk. So this chalk is actually doing some cleanup. So some of the frequencies which is not good for your processor. So it blocks some of these unnecessary frequencies. So it actually uh, cleaning up the voltage supply coming to your processor area. So chalk is doing that part. So then it reaches to the capacitors to further smoothen the voltage. But I have to tell you that if you take a fracture of second, right, all of these uh, VRMs, all of these power delivery stages are not operating at once. So there is a special component in the motherboard which is called PWM controller. So this PWM controller signals to your VRMs or you can call it as these stages. So it is asking these stages to operate. So the PWM control send a signal. Okay, now this stage should run and then to the next stage and then to the next stage and then to the next stage, something like that. So PWM controller is actually switching in between these stages. So because of that, the, these VRMs are not running all the time. So it gets some rest to cool down and then it gets a chance to deliver the power, right? So this PWM controller is handling that which VRM should operate in a given fracture of second. So because of this switch over, right, between these VRMs, when the voltage is coming into your process area, it is coming from multiple paths. So these capacitors are sitting in the middle. So then it is, it smoothen up the power delivery comes from this each and every stage. Okay, that is how you get a cleaner and smoother power supply to your voltage. Okay, now you might have a question, what gaming motherboard does other than a normal motherboard when it comes to this power delivery? So I told you these power stages are responsible for providing power to your processor. So obviously, if you take a gaming motherboard, you will be able to see more power delivery stages compared to a normal motherboard. So if you take this motherboard, it has 14 plus 2 power delivery stages. That means it has 16 power delivery stages. That means since you have more channels to provide power to your processor, it can deliver more power to your processor than a normal motherboard as well as it get more rest to cool down the VRM section. And the quality of VRM components uh, available in gaming motherboards are uh, better as well as they are expensive. As example, the high quality MOSFETs can deliver more power without producing much more heat as well as the chokes also similar. I think this motherboard has uh, alloy chokes which can handle higher rate of power. Finally, the quality of the capacitors provides you know longer lifespan as well as can operate in high temperatures. Okay, now let's discuss about the overclocking features. Almost all these gaming motherboards usually have overclocking features provided by the uh, motherboard BIOS itself. That means without using any third party or any other application, you can overclock your processor just by using your BIOS software. Some of the motherboards actually provides automatic overclocking. That means if you are not an experienced user, but still you can overclock your processor uh, by changing one or two value in the motherboard BIOS area. So you don't need to have extensive knowledge about overclocking. So then motherboard will take care of the uh, overclocking part. So you are just enabling it. So in that case, actually in this motherboard also provides that automatic overclocking as well as it has some AI functions. So this AI function actually monitoring your processor, right? The, the voltage it is requesting and the heat it is generating. So it keeps track of these properties and it adjusts the CPU frequency accordingly. So then you don't need to measure or you don't need to worry about this uh, overclocking values. So the motherboard itself handles the overclocking part. So most of these uh, gaming motherboards have this automatic overclocking features. Not only that, if you are an experienced user, right? So in those cases also, uh, gaming motherboards has manual overclocking features. So in those cases, you can switch your overclocking functionalities to manual, then you can tweak and change all of these properties, all of these values by yourself according to your experience and knowledge. So you can tweak everything up according to your expectations. 
anyway i will be doing a separate video uh, on automatic and manual overclocking on these kind of motherboards uh, in future to discuss more on this finally we can discuss about the cooling methods usually all of these gaming motherboards has larger and efficient heat sinks compared to normal motherboards so if you can see this area it has very big as a strong heat sink to cool down your vrms and if you can see in this section you can see uh, it has a bigger portion of heat sink to cool down your chipset as well as another big chunks of heat sinks to cool down your nvme ssd areas so if you install some nvme ssds these three bigger heat sinks can absorb the heat from your nvme ssds and cool them down and if you want to overclock these components as well as the water cool so you can do that also easily with this motherboard so if you really want to water cool you can water cool your processor and your rams and if you have your graphic card you can water cool the graphic card but some of the motherboards you will be able to see the already water block installed vrm sections so you can water cool the vrm section and some of the motherboards you might be able to find a third party water blocks to your vrm sections like this processor water block and and most of the rams you can water cool easily by installing uh, water blocks in some of the motherboards you can water cool your chipset as well and if you really want to uh, water cool your NVMe M.2 SSDs also there are some methods available in the market to water cool them as well that means you can water cool all of these components uh, which generate heat inside your motherboard and one last thing if you really want to water cool everything in your motherboard and nowadays there are methods available to water cool whole motherboard by submerging it into a special liquid that means your whole motherboard is water cooled by this special liquid which is not conductive at all so you don't need to worry about this each and every component to water cool but this method is usually available for cooling down servers it is not that popular to water cool you know general purpose personal computers at the moment okay these are the things we discussed today in this video okay, in the next video uh, i'm planning to discuss about input output especially the headers uh, you can see in a gaming motherboard similarities differences uh, when it comes to gaming motherboard and a normal motherboard as well as the peripheral connections and the devices you can connect to a gaming motherboard okay if you have any questions or suggestions about this video please uh, let me know by uh, putting a comment and if i miss something on this video uh, please let me know about that as well okay stay tuned with us and see you again in our next video thank you